The coming reign of Christ on earth will be radically different than what we experience today, but it will have some similarities. The coming righteous reign of Christ is sometimes thought to be a period that is without sin or suffering on earth. The coming righteous reign is instead a period when man still sins and suffers, but the exercise of sin and suffering is severely limited by the reign of Christ on earth. Man will not suffer or openly sin to the extent that he does now, but man will still sin, and there will still be some measure of suffering and death. But unlike today's short lifespans and the strength of sin to overcome people because of spiritual deceptions, these effects will be significantly reduced in Christ's earthly kingdom. No longer will there be in it an infant who lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live out his days. For the young will die at the age of 100, and the one who does not reach the age of 100 will be thought accursed. For as the lifetime of a tree, so will be the days of my people, and my chosen ones will wear out the work of their hands. Sin and even some poverty will still exist in the millennial reign of Christ, but unlike today, when sin is tolerated patiently, in the coming kingdom, sin will be dealt with swiftly. The cries of the needy will be swiftly addressed. He will have compassion on the poor and needy, and the lives of the needy he will save. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, and their blood will be precious in his sight. This messianic passage about the coming reign of Christ notes that though Christ will reign, he will still have to deal with issues of sin, oppression and violence, and poverty amongst his people. The millennial reign will be one far greater and far better than anything we can experience today, but because man is still sinful and in need of obedience to his Savior, he will still be subject to the effects of sin. This should help us to see that man has no excuse for not coming to Christ to deal with the sin problem. While man has lived on the earth in the days of false religion and spiritual deception, his sin increased because Satan was active in deceiving the nations. But in the future kingdom, Satan will be bound, unable to influence man. Yet man will still sin apart from obedience to Christ. This means that we are inexcusable. And unless we surrender ourselves to Christ, we can only expect a coming judgment for sin instead of a joyful reward. As with all things, the Christian experience contains a mixture of suffering and joy. For the Christian, suffering is a temporary condition that will give way to the benefits of eternal life in a state of unending conscious happiness and joy. But for the person who does not know Jesus Christ, a terrible judgment awaits. The coming judgment is a long period in the future when those who have rejected Jesus Christ are judged by God and forced to endure an unending period of eternal suffering in the lake of fire. No one likes the idea of judgment. In the modern era, we view judgment as an active and unloving God. We see judgment as an unfair act of God and wonder why the God of the Bible that claims to love man so deeply would send people to an eternity of suffering. Yet this perspective on God's judgment of sin is colored by man's desire to keep his sin. It's helpful for us to get a larger picture of God's character and behavior when it comes to judgment, especially where God's justice is concerned. For instance, how can God be good and condemn some people for eternity with no hope of rescue and still be called a fair or just God? This issue was addressed by the Apostle Paul in the book of Romans. By the transgression of the one, the many died. Much more did the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound to the many. Here the Apostle Paul notes that since sin was imputed to us through the original sin of the first man, Adam, thus all of us have a sin nature that is condemned by God. But God, being a merciful and fair God, also imputes his righteousness to us through Christ to all who receive him. The only difference between the saved and the condemned person is that the saved person has voluntarily received the forgiveness of sin made possible through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. In God's fairness, he imputed sin to all men through one man, 
and he imputed righteousness to all who receive him through one man, Jesus Christ. Thus, to those who reject Jesus Christ, the scripture warns, if we go on sinning willfully after receiving the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a terrifying expectation of judgment and the fury of a fire which will consume the adversaries of God. Anyone who set aside the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much severer punishment do you think he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the Spirit of grace? What will this terrible judgment be like? At the end of our age, when God raises from the dead all who have rejected the Lord Jesus, the Scripture teaches a terrible event will take place. The Apostle John wrote of the coming judgment, saying, I saw a great white throne and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books according to their deeds. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every one of them according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. In a final statement in the Bible about the destiny of those who reject Christ, Christ himself declares, for the cowardly and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and immoral persons and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars, their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The final terrible act of judgment upon those who reject Christ and keep their sin is the last act of suffering that humanity will ever experience. Those who reject Christ will experience an eternity of torment. But those who follow Christ from the heart, serving only Him, will experience something far different. The coming joy is a period of eternal, unending happiness, joy and exaltation for those who know Jesus Christ. Since the coming joy will be an unending period without sin or suffering, there will be nothing to inhibit the Christian's experience and enjoyment of life, relationships, and God. The suffering, broken relationships, personal traumas, and all other problems associated with sin and suffering will be done away with for all of eternity in the new heaven and new earth. Unlike some religious systems which teach a nirvana of personal non-existence, the Bible reveals the true nature of our coming eternal state, a never-ending succession of conscious moments as individuals, resurrected in indestructible bodies, always enjoying life, relationships, and our Lord, without any sin or suffering to break or damage that enjoyment. The Apostle John describes the vision he received of our eternal state in the book of Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and there was no longer any sea. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among men, and he will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there will no longer be any death. There will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain. The first things have passed away. And he who sits on the throne said, Behold, I am making all things new. And he said, Right, for these words are faithful and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give to the one who thirsts from the spring of the water of life without cost. He who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God and he will be my son. To close today's lesson, let's review the four principles we've learned about the future of man. 
The coming tribulation is a seven-year period in the near future when the devotion of God's people is tested through great suffering, persecution, and death. The coming righteous reign of Christ is a period when Jesus and all of His followers who have been raised from the dead will reign on earth, administering God's kingdom on earth for a period of 1,000 years. And the coming judgment is a long period in the future when those who have rejected Jesus Christ are judged by God and forced to endure an unending period of eternal suffering in the lake of fire. And finally, the coming joy is a period of eternal unending happiness, joy and exaltation for those who know Jesus Christ. Since the coming joy will be an unending period without sin or suffering, there will be nothing to inhibit the Christian's experience and enjoyment of life, relationships, and God. Each of the weekly Together Through the Bible Studies have a matching Bible study worksheet you can use to aid you in your study of God's Word. And this week's guide that is available free online at eagletv.mn. Each four-page study guide contains the major highlights of the weekly study, scripture references, along with practical questions to help you apply what you learn from these studies. Feel free to use these guides with your church or cell group. And remember, the guides are always available at eagletv.mn. If you missed any part of today's Together Through the Bible, then go online to eagletv.mn and watch it in its entirety in Mongolian or in English. No sign-up is required. Simply click on the Bible Studies main selection and then choose an online study video. We also, we also want, want to make this, this entire 10-part series, series on God's character and man's ethics available to you as a DVD. This 10-part series is available on two DVDs. Volume 1 contains episodes 1 through 5. Volume 2 contains episodes 6 through 10. And each DVD also includes the study guides for each episode and additional free study guides on other topics to help you in your spiritual growth. These DVDs can be used for personal enrichment or as a way to facilitate more in-depth Bible study with your church or cell group. To purchase one or both DVDs, call Eagle TV at 463-088. That's 463-088. DVDs are only 5,000 tuprics. Now, when you call, we'll give you instructions on how to receive a copy of either volume of this study. Thanks for watching today's episode of Together Through the Bible, a production of Eagle Broadcasting Company, sponsored by the Among Foundation.